Right, hello everybody. The Welcome to another bunch of lies about chemistry known as the GCSE chemistry syllabus. Sorry, I should be more enthusiastic about that. You've probably not got any choice about whether you're going to do this or not. But please bear in mind that these are oversimplifications that amount to falsifications about chemistry. I'm going to talk today about chemical bonds. Now, you can think of the, there as being three types of chemical bonds. There are ionic bonds there are covalent bonds and there are metallic bonds. Now I'll start off with ionic bonds. You're probably familiar with the idea of static electricity. You rub something and it picks stuff up as a result. I was looking for something static but I can't actually find anything. Um, yeah so yeah you rub these two things together and what happens is one lot loses electrons and the other one gains electrons and because opposites attract one becomes positively charged, the other becomes negatively charged, and they stick together. That's what's happening with ionic bonds. Now, here is a picture, oversimplified and falsified, of fluorine and sodium. Now, if you look at the fluorine, you'll see that on the outside it has seven electrons in this misshapen and wrongly represented orbital. Now, they like there to be eight electrons, so it's going to want another electron. Then you've got sodium, which is two later, and it's one, two, it's actually got one electron in that orbit. So it has an electron which fluorine wants. And basically what happens is they stick together because one of them has something that the other one wants. And you get an ionic bond. Now they normally occur between a metal and a non-metal. And so you get sodium fluoride. Here is a picture of sodium fluoride. Right, that was a picture of sodium fluoride. It consists of basically a cube-shaped arrangement of alternating sodium and fluorine atoms which are sticking together because each of them wants something that the other one hasn't got. And they're both trying to minimise their energy state by having eight electrons in their outer shell. Now, uh, another example would be sodium chloride, table salt. It's overused prop, isn't it? Right, so you've got sodium chloride. Now, they are... Ionic compounds tend to have various things in common. Firstly, they're not really molecules, or you can look at the entire crystal as a molecule. So they could be seen as enormous molecules that are actually visible to the naked eye in this case. I don't know if you can see any of individual grains in there, but there you go. They have a high melting point because the static electricity, the electricity is trying to keep them together. So they're solid at room temperature. The melting point of salt is about 800 degrees centigrade. They're also soluble in water. So here you've got some water, which is a covalent compound. You put the salt in it. Give it a good stir. And you've got a salt solution in water because and it does indeed taste slightly salty. And that also means that they're good conductors of electricity, the solutions are. So that's another thing. And they're also good insulators. If you get a lump of salt as a solid substance, it isn't going to, nothing is going to go anywhere through it. So it's not going to get hot on one side and cold on the other. I mean, it's not going to conduct heat or anything like that. It will just sit there and do its thing. Okay, so those are the characteristics of ionic compounds. Now, actual molecules, because ionic compounds don't really form molecules, are different. They have covalent bonds, and covalent bonds are usually between non-metals. Here is an oversimplified diagram of a carbon dioxide molecule. You've got the carbon in the middle with four electrons in its outer shell, and you've got the oxygen with Six electrons in the south of Sean. So what they do there is they're actually sharing their electrons. So what happens is they share the electrons. You've actually got like a larger orbital which joins them together. Covalent compounds. The boiling point of carbon dioxide at normal temperature and pressure is about minus 78 degrees centigrade. It has a very low boiling point. Another example, of course, of a covalent compound is water, which has an unusually high boiling point for its size, but is still liquid at room temperature, which is surprising in a way. 
So, uh, covalent compounds, they can be solid, liquid, or gaseous at room temperature. Uh, they represent, they are bonds between two non-metals, for example, hydrogen, dihydrogen monoxide, carbon dioxide, methane, which is carbon tetrahydride. They tend to be, uh, they tend not to conduct electricity in themselves, they're not very soluble, uh, and well, there you go. I mean, they're the molecules. Most of the substances that make up the human body are, in fact, covalent compounds, although we have salt in our body as well, or salt. So we have ionic stuff in our body as well, although they can't really be said to be compounds, because when they're dissolved in water, you've got the individual atoms wandering around in the water. Then you've got metallic bonding. Now, metallic bonding is another thing again, because what happens with metallic bonding is the electrons go into a sort of cloud in the mass of the substance and they can't be said to be in a particular place. So metallic bonding is very difficult to understand but you end up with shininess, hardness, bendiness and clanginess because what happens with a metallic element or a metallic compound because some of them are alloys with mixtures or compounds of other metals is that uh, for a start, because they share the electrons, when uh, light goes on them, it causes light to bounce off and light can't go through very easily. So if I put this up here, you'll notice that it is very, very much not transparent. And also the light bounces off it because light can never slow down, so it will just go off in another direction. They're also, metals are also hard, shiny, usually shiny silvery in colour, although a few of them are sort of reddish like copper or yellowish like gold because of where the limiting it's complicated. And so you have a situation where they don't bend easily but they are also malleable and flexible so they bend when they do bend they sort of stay in that position and they just go bang when you kick uh, when you strike them. So, for example, um, I'm not going to put that on. Hold on. All right, that's the tripod. Made of metal, makes a clanging sound. Okay, and they're shiny. So, those are the characteristics of metallic bonds. Just one more thing about them. I also want to talk just briefly about allotropes. Allotropes, allotopes, allotopes, allotropes. I can't remember. I'll put it on the screen anyway so you can tell which one's which. Um, those are different forms of the same element, and uh, with carbon there are quite a number of different forms, but one of them is graphite. Now graphite looks like this. Sheets of hexagonally arranged atoms with fairly weak connections between the two, which because they have the weak connections, you can actually move electrons vertically through them, vertically, I mean, you know, at right angles to the hexagons. And as a result, graphite is a weak conductor of electricity. Or by contrast, you also have diamond. And diamond is a tetrahedral arrangement of atoms, and as a result, does not conduct electricity, but is much more firmly bonded, and therefore is not a good conductor, but is extremely hard. So those are those two. There are actually quite a number of different kinds. Now, when you see that sort of situation where you have one element which it has different forms, another one would be, the example would be white and red phosphorus. Uh, those are called allotopes, and there are different types of element which can arrange, the, whose atoms can be arranged in diff, into different shapes. So uh, that's it for today. And uh, I'm sorry if I'm feeling a little bit cynical about about the whole process but uh, it is GCSC chemistry and this is what you're supposed to the information that you're supposed to impart so that's what I'm doing and I'll um as far as you know GCSC chemistry is concerned and big science I will see you next week with something else <laughs>